probably by now most people have heard about house church we're going to talk with a good friend of mine who has been doing house church for years and the youth and young people are flocking to this type of church in 2024 so i have my good friend daniel maranachinko hello hello. Daniel, hello hello welcome tell Thank us you. about what's going on in orlando florida what's been happening over the years and specifically now in this current year we're in with yeah. young people coming to something called house church and first off what is house church in by your definition yeah so yeah there's a few different ways we like to identify it or define it um but one one word we've kind of used and coined um to kind of help us redefine church we call it house church community or a community our community right so many times because when we hear the word church we think of a building right and that's why we have to say we're a house church community because we we gather in homes um I, and we don't say it's a you know we don't call the church a building church but to help people understand that uh, we gather in homes as a primary way uh, is helps people you know understand or or get on 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 the same page with us but i think there's a few elements of here of being a a church community that is actually a body of believers that's a family <laughs> you know christ came to establish us as a family and every church is a family and each family each church community has the decision to make how will we gather how will we do life together how will we invite people into our lives and the problem is is that many times churches have just become event-based centers <laughs> where it's like we're just putting on a show or not maybe. And I, I know many of us have uh, great intentions in, in gatherings, but you can't complete all of God's purpose in just a one single, right? And this is where we must transition from just being a gathering to actually doing life together. And that's part of the transition that we're seeing the Lord um, take place in the body of Christ is that, events can't sustain a church community and events don't sustain real families if all you're doing up doing in family is showing up to events how are you actually building those relationships that are so key to healthy families right and so the reason we gather in homes is that it cultivates family it cultivates community it cultivates the, those authentic relationships with one another where there's discipleship there's accountability there's real love exchange, there's service, and there's not, not just programs and systems in place, but actual relational connection. And this is what we're seeing the next generation. They're longing for that connection because much of what connection people have is maybe over the internet or social media and different things, but the human heart is longing for that face-to-face -face, real life interaction. And as you know, culture in the last two decades have shifted to be so technology based um there's the need in in so many of us and i believe in all all of humanity to actually have those connections and many people are running away from that because they've been hurt by by those maybe connections that have been had in the past but we believe that the church is meant to restore those relationships and really express god's heart through family so homes help cultivate authentic community authentic relationships and authentic family and it takes us on the journey to developing it a lot faster than many times gathering in buildings many times buildings still have this business-esque mm -hmm. vibe to it you know and that's right. something that we're seeing shifting right and i know for me personally when i first got saved i was part of a mega church and it's a really awesome mega church i mean it was in mm -hmm. orlando and when i got saved you know i went through i didn't even know about worship so i remember like one of the first times i actually started singing i'm like i'm singing with everybody i remember when i started lifting my hands i'm like i'm doing it it was so scary but mega church helped teach me a lot about the lord and now yeah. we're in house church mm -hmm. and one thing though i love what you pointed out was like the deep relationship the connection you're seeing people, you're seeing the same people. When you go to a big church, a lot of time you don't know who the other people are. And if you do, it's kind of like a hi, hello. But right. tell me what it's like every week seeing the same people, the same people are coming. Yeah. What what does that do, especially for 
say a young person that's in their teens yeah. or their early 20s? Yeah, I think one of the primary things is that your face and your presence here matters. Uh, when mm -hmm. we gather in homes, we believe every person that comes to the gathering, we, we are the body of believers that have gathered, that have assembled together as the house of God. We are the house of God. So if we're showing up, if a new person shows up to the gathering, they're just as much as part of the house uh, as someone that's been there, you know, a year or two, meaning that their presence matters, their contribution matters, because Jesus comes to us as a community, as a body of believers. It's determined by those that have gathered, right? So many times we... In, in institutional settings, we just come to worship with a body of believers, but many times there's not this con contribution element to it. And this is one thing that one reason we gather in homes is many times we're in the living room, we're in a circle and we can see each other. We're not hiding We're no one's going to like you're not going to slip out of there without someone engaging you. And if you're struggling, we're here to pray for you. We're here to support you. And so there's a lot less hiding room. Uh, in this living room setting. And another thing is that when you come into my house, my house is my heart, right? My house is my safe place. So I'm inviting you into something that's personal rather than something that's more business impersonal. And if we really want to cultivate these authentic relationships, it's going to have to take us letting our walls down and letting people into the personal places of our lives. But when a young person comes into the setting, um, they are seeing that they're valued and that their contribution matters. And then they're looking in, around a room of people that are committed to one another. We're, mm -hmm. We are committed to Jesus, to the Lordship of Jesus over our lives. But not only that, we're committed to a body of believers. And we're walking together from one season to the next, letting the Lordship of Jesus define, be defined for us as a community, as a family. Jesus is Lord over this church community. And together we're navigating, what is Jesus saying? What is he doing? How is he coming to us? You know, in the book of Revelation, Jesus is coming to these churches in these different cities. And the revelation of Jesus is what's releasing the message and the truth that the, that church needs. And I believe that the, the, the body of believers need to discern together. How is Jesus coming to us how is, is his voice coming? How is his presence coming? And how is it leading us to become a people that look like Jesus, right? And all of us as a body, we are getting to contribute to that because we're all different members of the body and our contribution is discerning what Jesus is doing. Come on. And that's so, because when you go to a normal traditional church and you go there, typically it's the worship team, it's mm -hmm. the pastor, you know, maybe it's an elder giving an announcement, something like that. But yeah. for the most part, everybody is spectating. And I don't want to say that's necessarily what everyone is doing, because obviously we're going to worship, right. we're going to receive the word. But for right. the most part, there's a stage and there's people in the audience or congregation watching and all this stuff. But in a house church, right, you're saying it's completely different. People yeah. are they can release a word. They can ask a question. Mm -hmm. They can contribute in the discussion. Right. So right. I want to hear some, maybe some just specific stories or anything that comes to mind about people that have come, specifically young people that mm -hmm. have come in. For those of you who don't know, Daniel, they do some pretty awesome week long. Uh, I don't want to say trainings. They're, what would you, how would you say that? They're, They're discipleship schools. They're, mm -hmm. you know, discipleship is such a big element of house church as well, where it's, we call it life on life discipleship, where close proximity with a group of people that are walking with Jesus is discipling us. We're seeing Jesus in one another. Right. And so mm. we're not just being discipled, mentored by one person. We're mentored by the family, by coming into healthy family. We then can receive from the life of Jesus through the body. Right. And some sometimes that happens powerfully in a gathering setting. But that should, should be happening in daily life together because we don't check clock in, clock out of Jesus, he's in us. So right. if he's in us, he's going to be revealed in different moments. And sure, there's powerful presence moments in gatherings, but the emphasis isn't just in prioritizing one powerful gathering a week. It's actually how are our lives being built together throughout the week. Sunday 
or you know whatever day, day we're gathering shows us who we're committing to do life with and when mm. we're committed to each other in that family way then we're being uh, you know walking together through different seasons and times together um, but one right. one powerful moment remember that happened we had this young missionary that came and she was from out of state she was part of another ministry and we felt specifically um, just to minister to her. And this was kind of early on in the gathering. We introduced her. We shared who she was. We started praying for her. And all of a sudden, the whole gathering, the whole two hours was us ministering to this young missionary and washing her feet, loving her to life. And that was not separate from the need of a message of worship of whatever you many times we have these agendas for meetings but we're here to gather in the presence of the lord and we're here to discern the body you know i don't know if you know that scripture you need to discern the body well discerning the body means know who you're in the room with <laughs> like understand that you're in the body of christ and who's needing healing who's needing ministry and there's many times where the Lord shifts the direction of a meeting because someone is in need of the life of God through the body. And we like to say this, um, the body heals itself. Our, mm -hmm. our physical bodies heal itself. It knows when there's a wound. And this is how when we're together with believers, we should discern the body and know where does the blood need to flow to bring healing. And this is what happens when there's people that are wounded or needing freedom or needing breakthrough. Like they, they'll come in and the body will discern, let's love this person to life. Um, and so this is what's really important in our culture. But like you mentioned, like being participatory where we're not just showing up to watch or like our hearts are discerning, Lord, is there something for me to contribute a word? Many Sometimes, yeah, it's even in worship, we're always encouraging people, hey, be sensitive to what the Lord's wanting to speak to us as a body, right? Maybe it's a scripture. Maybe it's a prayer he's going to put on your heart. Maybe it's a word of prophecy, an exhortation. And so we're letting the spirit of God come, come down, descend on us and release through the body um, his voice to us. Mm, right. And then you feel edified, like, that's one thing I've noticed when people are being used by God, you actually are being built up as well. You're right. being edified. And in so many churches in throughout the United States, throughout the world, it's wonderful to receive the word of God. It's wonderful to worship. But the mm -hmm. gifts and talents and the abilities they have, it's hard to be utilized in a, in a place with a thousand other people. It's also hard to be right. seen that you obviously we have the gift of the Holy Spirit and prophecy and you know, a pastor can call out somebody and different things like that. And that's beautiful. But in the house mm -hmm. church, it's harder to hide these things. And it's also right. easier to, to allow it's the Lord to them. use his people to 100%. touch the individuals. Yeah, we, we like to say that everybody has a front row seat. So mm. we're, we're all face to face looking. We're, we can look at the body across the room from us. And that's to promote and, and validate what, what people have. Um, and obviously, there's ways to facilitate a gathering. There's obviously details of we, we do training schools to help people that want to actually lead um, house churches or, or community homes that we have um, that, that emphasize on life on life discipleship, really. And we believe God is restoring that to the church. But, yeah, we like to say everybody has a front row seat that whenever the Lord prompts something on your heart and we create a room, we, there's I'm sure, as you know, in house church. There's many times silence in the room because we're letting people that have something share and we'll wait for 30 seconds. We'll wait for a minute or two to say, is everybody's heart clear? Because sometimes the spirit of God is just burning something inside of you, you know, and then, um, and we and love it when that happens. Bit. The person yeah. to stand up and be like, yeah, I do have a word. I do have right. feel like something's burning on me. Right. Mm. Yeah. And, so and like good. you said, it's actually part of maturity because oh, as disciples, as believers we grow by obeying jesus and so that context where we're allowing people to obey jesus what is jesus speaking to you speak it out it's actually growing them in boldness courage and servanthood and submission to jesus christ and we're creating that safe place 
for people to step out, to experiment. You know, as you know, having children, they have to take those first steps. They have to start mm -hmm. like experimenting and, and you clean up the mess after them. But part of healthy families is creating safe places for the children to play. Right. Mm -hmm. And as you, as a father, you know, that, that very well, if you don't create that safe place, they'll live in fear. They'll security. They won't they'll play. live in, they, right. They won't experiment. And so, right. And that's why we're passionate to, to remain in homes. You know, we're, we're not grow. If we grow beyond a home, we start another home. We start, we raise up leaders to, to facilitate gatherings, but we love that, that close knit place where like you feel at home with the people that you're saying yes to walk with, to love on, to know, to, I think that, that, that the longing in all of us is to, to be known and to know, like to, we're yeah. fully known by God, but are you fully known by your brother or sister? Have you been vulnerable with anybody? Have you opened up to anybody about your struggle? And the Bible says, confess your sins and pray for one another that you may be healed. Healing mm -hmm. comes when we open up our hearts to one another. Love gets built when we open up our hearts. And the home is such a centerpiece to cultivating that openness and that vulnerability to, to mm -hmm. really take place as a way of life. Mom. I want to hear your thoughts now, just to pivot a little bit. As someone who's been pioneering house church for years, has raised up leaders with house church, has exposed mm -hmm. so many to house church, what are your thoughts about the end times as we're entering into these crazy days? Yeah. Personally, for me, I believe that the house church is the end time church, that that's what mm -hmm. we're going to be doing. That's what's going to that's going to be the only option right now. There are options and such. Right. But what are your thoughts? Where does the house church environment, where is the house church unit, whatever you want to call it? Have, where is the place of that in the end times as yeah. right before the return of Jesus? I mean, once again, God is purifying the bride and making her ready for his return. We know that. And part of part of what I believe God is going to reestablish, once again, the homes cultivate a certain life together. And that's one thing that you we have to understand. We're not trying to be like fanatics just to rebel against institutional stuff. Like, no, the goal is that are we being raised up as a community of believers that can stand in tr the craziest, most like tribulation that's coming? Like literally crazy tribulation is coming. We've seen COVID. That was a little appetizer. Um, we're we're going to see worse things that are going to be hitting this world, our, the nations of the earth. And are we united with a body of believers that that we can't be separated from, right? COVID separated people. It divided the church. What we're coming into has to be greater than what the governments tell us to do. And if we're not walking in covenant with a community of believers, then how are we going to stand? How are we going to be united when we stand? How are we going to have the ability to, to support one another. And that's why, yeah, the underground church, you know, the, the house church community is a relational knit community that we know that God's uniting uh, and building these families that are going to withstand the most craziest times this world has ever seen. And so, yeah, I believe governments are going to be against, you know, in Christianity in the coming days. The Bible says that you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. So these things are coming uh, and these families, these spiritual families, and they're most likely going to be groups of, you know, 50 to 100 people, maybe, maybe 20, you know, where this solid community of people that you're close knit with and that you're able to stand together through those times. But yes, it's, it's, it's dawning on us. And I believe the sooner people understand that this covenant relationship, this loyalty um, that God's wanting to to have between the family, that we're not just signed up together for, you know, we're not just signed up to fulfill some mission together. We're signed up because we have genuine love for one another, no strings attached. And I'm, I'm laying down my life for you because you're my brother in Christ. Mm, come on. If you know, if you want to be part of the Sold School Week, or even the Sold School, we even talk about that, but they actually have a longer extended Sold School that lasts the whole season. I believe it's three, four months, correct? Yes. yes. And same thing, living in the house, life on mm -hmm. life, 
Yes. I mean, it's amazing. Like I was able to be one of the mentors of one of them. And it's so cool seeing these young people just grow and be transformed, not only in the meetings. And this is one thing Daniel's really highlighting. It's not just in, in the meeting, it's in the house. It's in right. being with one another, establishing these deep relationships. So if you're interested, there is links in the description. You can check out more about Daniel, about Sold Week, about Sold School, the house yeah. churches. Um, a lot is happening. Do you want to share any final thoughts just about House Church, Ed, just anything you want to say to the people right now. Yeah, guys, just, man, let's let's really build family. Let's really pursue laying down our lives for one another. And it's it's not just a, a gathering once a week. It's our lives to look, to become like Jesus. And you can't do this without others. Uh, many times we are so individualistic in our Christianity where I just need to be fed or I just need to go to this conference to feed myself. I need this breakthrough. And you're going to find breakthrough when you lay down your life for others. And so when you come into a family that is operating in place of unity, love and lay, laying down your life for one another, there's something that deep that happens that actually brings us into the more of God. If you're looking for the more of God, Go no further than finding brothers and sisters that you link arm with and that you walk in covenant with, that you are willing to, to lay down your lives for one another. You'll find more of Jesus there. And many times we think it's we isolate it to just the secret place or just God's presence. Well, God's presence is in his people. And so have you seen Jesus in your brother and sister? Have you, have you made the time to encounter Jesus through a brother or sister? And this is the goal that were, you know, Jesus was revealed to the disciples on the road to Emmaus at the breaking of bread over a meal, right? And so Jesus was is inviting us to the table to feast, to dine with brothers and sisters where our eyes can be open to see him. So I just, yeah, bless you guys to find Jesus in the, your community of believers or come visit ours. Um, we love hosting people. We love, we have community houses, we have the church, and we have schools that facilitate people coming in and, and joining us for, for, for a time period. So come through. We'd love to have you. Come on. Thank you, Daniel. And guys, like whether you feel called to a, a traditional church, a mega church, a small church, a house church, a cave church, a forest church, it doesn't matter. Like what Daniel's saying, to love those around you, to connect, to yeah. see the Lord through your brother and sister, to come into agreement with them and grow. And here's the thing. A lot of people, they may feel intimidated and say, wow, like a house church, like I can't just go sit in the back. That's the beauty of it. But here's the thing. Everybody has something to give. And one thing I love, even in Daniel, I'm sure could attest to this, that new believers, even if they're a little rocky and even they're a little shaky, they bring such fire. They bring even in God loves to see those people just step out. It does something to the whole environment, does something to the whole world. When a new believer or someone that's young in the faith steps out and does something for the first time, you know, like for the first time, like anybody to evangelize or share Jesus with somebody. It's just it shakes heaven. Like God's like, yes. They're stepping out. They're doing something new. It's like when you have a child and they walk for the first time, right? I mean, my children walk all the time. I don't clap when they're walking, but the first time they did it or the first time they said that word, it shakes something. So I want to encourage anyone out there, you are a believer, you've been a believer, but you feel weak, just step out. Step out in faith, whether it's in house church or big church or whatever it may be. God is calling all of us to be part of this end time revival, the end time church. But come on, so much more to say. Guys, subscribe for more. We got another video coming up with Daniel. It's going to be powerful. It's going to bless you all. We'll see you next time.